Are you one of the many people who antidepressants don't work for or you can't tolerate them and you want to find something else to take? If so, stay tuned. Hello everybody, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author, mental health educator, and depression survivor. Welcome to another edition of your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's video is called Natural Alternatives to Prozac Part 2. This is the uh, second in a two-part series. And uh, of course, we have to start with our joke. And one of the natural alternatives I'm going to be talking about later on in the video is, is light therapy. And this reminds me of something I just learned. Have you ever, wonder, ever wondered why uh, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb? Well, he had a bright idea. All right, so, uh, as I mentioned before, this is part two of our video series, Natural Turners to Prozac. And the reason we've created this, and the reason I have this on my website, is because many people uh, find that traditional antidepressants are just not working for them for a couple of reasons. One is they're only effective 40 to 60% of the time. Number two is even when they do work, sometimes the side effects are too much to tolerate. And number three, even when they do work, uh, sometimes they stop working. This is called Prozac poop out. Uh, so over the uh, you know the last couple of decades, uh, nutritionally uh, oriented doctors and herbalists have been looking for other substances like vitamins, like herbs, like other mind altering substances that could safely treat depression. And um, I've researched them. Uh, we covered five last week, just to review uh, for you guys who haven't seen last week. Exercise, omega-3 fatty acids, um, St. John's wort, SAMI, and ketamine were the five uh, modalities we discussed actually on the screen. And so we're going to discuss five more right now. Okay, so the first uh, <clears throat> alternative to Prozac in this video, number six overall, is called 5-HTP, which stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan. Now, this is a metabolite of the amino acid tryptophan, which is a precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin, the feel-good neurotransmitter in the brain that uh, drugs like, serot like Prozac and like Zoloft work on. And in the 1980s, people were taking L-tryptophan uh, as a supplement, hoping that it would be converted into serotonin and give you the same effect as antidepressants. However, there was a bad batch produced, I think, someplace in Japan. Some people died. It got yanked off the market. So people were looking for a substitute, and they came up with this thing called 5-HTP, which actually turns out to be even more effective than l in the first place. Uh, there was a head-to-head -head study uh, conducted by German and Swiss researchers, and over a six-week period, it was just as effective, 5-HTP was just as effective as Luvox in treating mild to moderate depression. Now, uh, right now, L-tryptophan has come back on the market. It's deemed safe. So I guess when you go to your local health food store, you could take 5-HTP or L-tryptophan. I did some research, and some of the uh, people running these uh, you know, wellness departments and health food stores have told me that 5-HTP is usually used for depression, and L-tryptophan is used for insomnia. But again, one man's meets another man's poisoning. Every time you take any sort of psychoactive substance, whether it's a regular antidepressant or an alternative, it's going to work for some people and not for others. And the other thing which we mentioned in the last video is because these things increase serotonin, if you're already taking a serotonin in inducer like Prozac or Zoloft or Selex, you should not combine both at the same time and you should talk to your doctor. But I have known people who were you know, overly sensitive to the, the SSRI drugs because they can cause a lot of side effects like agitation. These people have taken 5-HTP, which is much milder, and they've gotten some decent results from mild to moderate depression. Number seven on my list of natural alternatives to Prozac is psilocybin mushrooms. Uh, now, I have to admit I'm a child of the 60s, as is my uh, great videographer Jerry over there, and uh, I have to confess that I did many uh, mushroom trips back then and really enjoyed myself. Although, as Robin Williams once said, if you remember the 60s, you weren't really there. Anyway, I was uh, perusing the New York Times. I love the New York Times. What can I tell you? I'm a New Yorker in 2011. And I ran across this article about a psychologist in Vancouver, Washington, just across the river, 
who was depressed, uh, and he was given in a clinical trial psilocybin mushrooms. Wow. And he had one trip. He got some tremendous insights. He reconciled with his daughters, and his depression was healed. And I said to myself, oh my God, it's deja vu all over again, because in the 1950s, before psychedelics were outlawed, uh, made illegal, uh, many serious researchers at universities like the University of Maryland and up in Canada were using uh, uh, hallucinogen psychedelics as, as a study them to help with things like alcoholism, fear of death. In other words, they were, they were used as an aid to psychiatry back then, and now they were coming back into um, use. Fast forward seven years to 2018, which was last year, and Michael Pollan, a very well-respected journalist who's written about food, comes out with a book. Get this title. You'll see it on the screen. It says, How to Change Your Mind, What the New Science of Psychedelics Teaches Us About Consciousness, Dying, Addiction, Depression, and Transcendence. <laughs> what a subtitle, man. You're going to hook a lot of people with that. And, of course, it became a New York Times bestseller. So in this book, he talks about how psychedelics are now being re-looked at as a way to heal mood disorders, and he talks about psilocybin specifically, and how the FDA is using it in what are called phase two trials. There are three trials, phase one, two, and three. It's phase two. They studied it with ca cancer patients who were depressed, and they found that in 80% of the cases, there was a clinically significant change or decrease in their depression and anxiety. And now, as a result, it's moving into phase three testing, which means if it if it shows that it has therapeutic effect for a large amount of people more consistently, it could be legalized. Wow. Timothy Leary, if only you were alive today. In addition to this, there's people on the side doing something called microdosing psilocybin mushrooms, taking small amounts on their own. I have no idea how they measure the amounts or get that dosage right, but they are using it. And again, this is all anecdotal saying they're getting good results. I'm so intrigued with this that I'm going to be doing a video on it uh, fairly soon. And um, anyway, stay tuned for that. Number eight on our hit parade of natural alternatives to Prozac is light therapy. Now, light is an, obviously an essential component of the natural world. It's very important to our well-being, uh, to our spiritual health, our mental health, our physical health. And you can see this in phrases like, you know, let there be light or say by the light or I saw the light of day or the light at the end of the tunnel. We need sunshine. Sunshine is really important. Uh, first of all, it helps synthesize vitamin D, which uh, is important for many things in the body, immune function. And by the way, low levels of vitamin D are associated with depression. So all of you depressives out there, get your vitamin D levels checked, especially when you live in places like Oregon or Washington, right? So what happens during the winter months when the natural light uh, goes, you know, goes away or decreases tremendously? Well, our circadian rhythms get deregulated, and as a result, uh, we can fall prey to something called seasonal affective disorder, SAD, or seasonal depression. Uh, this happens during the winter months. What happens is people sleep a lot. They can't get out of bed. They crave carbohydrates. Uh, they're lethargic. They gain weight. And this can lead to problems. And, and, and I have one guy in a group I belong to who's normally really chipper, but every time uh, October, November, and December comes around, he really gets down. Fortunately, uh, here at, uh, in Portland, Oregon, on Pill Hill, OHSU, they're the leading researchers of, of, uh, of seasonal affective, affective disorder, excuse me, and they've come up with a really simple solution. Expose yourself to natural light. Two ways to do this. One is to get outside early in the morning and take a walk or a run. It seems that somehow getting that early light exposure resets our biological clock. Even if it's cloudy, uh, it doesn't seem to matter as long as you get out early in the morning. And the second thing is to basically uh, sit in front of an artificial light box uh, and for about 20 minutes. And did I bring, oh, I have my little crop here. Well, I should have gotten it before we started. Here we are. A light book uh, made in Alberta. Canada. Is this going to blind you guys? Whoops. Anyway, I put this by my computer, and while I'm checking my email or um, going ahead and reading the New York Times, it has to be, I think, about 18 inches away, and it resets the clock like nobody's business. There are many, many kinds of uh, light boxes out there, and these have been clinically shown to work. This is evidence-based medicine we're talking about here, and the people are very smart o over there at OHSU. So um, light boxes early morning exposure to light, and of course, 
sit by windows during the day, uh, see if you can get light wallpaper in your house or light carpet, uh, you know, try to uh, exercise outside if you can. And if all else fails and you got a couple of shekels in the bank, hop on the plane and take a little vacation to somewhere sunny. And like, like go to Hawaii, for example. Like, like, like right now, it's the middle of January. I'm sick and tired of this gray, cold weather in Portland. Can someone just send me some? No, I'm joking. It's, I don't want to be like, what's this guy's name in, in, in Texas when he's asking for money? I forgot he was some evangelical person who said, send me your money. But anyway, no. Go get to some warm climates, even if it's the weekend in Palm Springs or something, or Puerto Rico or Mexico. Yeah, I have a lot of friends who go to Mexico. Anyway, get out into the sunshine for a couple of days during the winter, and you'll feel a lot better. The ninth uh, natural alternative to Prozac is the whole vitamin B complex, especially vitamin B12 and also vitamin B3, vitamin B6. The B vitamins are, of course, really essential to human health. Uh, they produce brain chemicals that alter mood and affect mood and brain function. Uh, but not everybody absorbs them well, especially if your diet is poor, if you have Crohn's disease or celiac disease. Vitamin B12 uh, is only found in animal products, so vegans often don't get enough. So you need to get, um, what do you do? Take supplements. That's right, vitamin B12 supplements, or my partner Joan gets vitamin B12 shots. Some people think that niacin can really be helpful. Again, anecdotal studies of people taking uh, vitamin B3 niacin. Of course, we love that niacin flush. Uh, if you're truly deficient in vitamin B3, you normally take uh, 20 uh, you know, micrograms or actually milligrams a day, but uh, people have taken much more than that, up to 1,000 milligrams. The problem with there is that if you take the supplements too high, niacin too high, it can have side effects. So again, you need to be working with someone who knows what they're doing. Better to take your, get your vitamins, your B vitamins through food. So for example, vitamin B3, you can get through meats, fish, liver, peanuts, eggs, milk, and broccoli. One more aspect of the B vitamin complex that's really important is something called folate, vitamin B9. Uh, lots of studies have linked low folate levels to Depression, of course, again, eating healthy foods, uh, legumes, large source of uh, folate. Try not to take folic acid because I, I know in some studies it's been linked to cancer. Probably not a huge you know, issue, but always better to get uh, your, your vitamins through food. So folate, vitamin B9, healthy mood, get it through food. And the final uh, natural alternative to Prozac we're going to be talking about is saffron. And I just had a flashback, uh, talking about the 60s, right? Uh, I'm just wild about saffron. Saffron's wild about me. <clears throat> I'll give you $10 if you can know that song. Anybody? Raise their hands, videographers. What? Which one? Mellow Yellow by Donovan. Yes, what a cool song. Anyway, I hope some of you remember that. So what is saffron? Well, saffron is what? An herb, a medicine. It comes from Persia. It's been around forever. It has a vibrant color and flavor. It's also very expensive. But it has been used as a calmative and antidepressant and anti-inflammatory. And a number of studies show that it actually can help with mood. Uh, actually, saffron is the very top of the plant. And I, I guess it's called, what, the uh, crocus sativus. There it is right there. And um, they did a study in Iran, because this is where this herb is really bountiful, 40 adult... Uh, Outpatients who are depressed randomly assigned to give get uh, the crocus sativa and Prozac, and guess what? A mild amount of depression, the saffron worked just as well. And uh, during this this uh, program, we've talked about not you know using things with antidepressants at the same time. But here's a way I found, which has been recommended by a doctor: you just take this uh, saffron right here in in this little bottle. It's all ground up. And every morning you just, uh, ah, it's like, it's like it's an essential oil. You just let it go right through your olfactory uh, lobes and it really smells good and it feels good. So um, this is a really cool way to take saffron. Any other, I guess we could, we could go to some Persian cookbooks and check it out, but uh, sniffing it or smelling it is a really good way to get it. And it is, has an antidepressant flavor or effect. <laughs> okay, but maybe I should start putting in my food too. Anyway, this has been Douglas Block. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. <clears throat>
We have now covered in the past two videos the, the top 10 natural alternatives to Prozac. Again, if you're going to start taking any of these substances, please consult your doctor uh, or work under the supervision of a naturopath or a nutritionist. And um, in the meantime, if you have any comments about this video or if you've taken any of these uh, uh, substances or tried these out, please let me know. Leave your comments in the comments section or you can email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. I always want more anecdotal evidence. And if you want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo during the closing credits. If you want to do mental health coaching, you can look at the URL on the screen or simply go to healingfromdepression.com. And if you want to become a sustaining member of this channel, click on the Patreon link in the closing credits and you'll be taken to that website. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much for watching.